when we were kids, we all used to dream of becoming a pilot, a lawyer, or even a footballer. But never do we think about becoming a mortician. The idea of working with the dead, it does seem strange and even a little scary. But the reality is, death is a natural part of life. And yet, it's something that we often shy away from talking about. We all know that someday we will die. But we don't like to think about it. We don't like to talk about it. And we don't plan for it. And when we die, who takes care of us? What happens to us when we die? France did not dream of becoming a mortician, but as fate would have it, he was posted to the Collingwood Teaching Hospital morgue for his national service, where his life changed forever. I was inspired by one of the doctors. She is a female doctor, actually. We were in the theater one time and then I asked her why a female like her is, is, is interested in doing this kind of job. And the answer she gave was very inspiring to me. I was like, okay, let me also dare and then pursue this course. So that's how come I've been in this field. So what happens when someone dies? What do you do? Okay. I think this is a very practical aspect. So I think we would have, if you we wouldn't mind, we can go to the shoulder and you have it in yourself. This is our receiving end. At the same time, the exit end. When someone dies, the head goes for the world rounds or whatever has the body is, is lying in. We come to this point, we get it out, we wash the bodies and then we place them in the so fridge. Where do, you, where do you wash the bodies? We have a place here. You want for for it? For body, for body, for body. So, this is the washing process. We wash from here and then we, we put it in the fridge. So from here, we move the bodies straight to the fridge. Yeah, it's a 102 capacity fridge. So we have 102 bodies inside as well. 102 bodies, not really, it's not full. It's not full. Uh, some people say that some of the bodies wake up at night. Uh, some say some of the bodies even slap you when you are bathing them. Do some of these things that we hear about working in the mob, do they really happen? Per experience. I have never experienced anything like that. But like I said, way before I would even start working on the show, I mean, in such an environment, these are some of the misconceptions outside, superstitions and all that. That was the more reason my, my that was the more reason why my mom was opposing the fact that, oh, this is what my son is going to do. But I mean, upon working here, I, I realized most of the stories outside is, is not true. Okay. It's not true. There are also some people who say that uh, you guys also sell body uh, parts, body parts, uh, body fluids. The, the, you know the fluids, fluids nails, hair for uh, ritualists and um, some pastors. And have you ever witnessed such a thing? Well, like I said, I've, I've been in this world for like seven years now. I've never, nobody has ever come to me for such a favor or such a request, to me, it's, it's not true, it's not true. But working here, don't you get scared? So it's all, it's all part of the experience. Initially, it wasn't easy. Like my first one month, two months in college, it wasn't, it wasn't really, really easy at all. It's, it's just about psyching yourself and realizing that this is where you are going to work for some period of time or for the rest of your life. How does your partner feel about the kind of job that you're doing? My current partner, we met at a time where I have already started this thing. And she already have a clear idea where I was working before we even started big dating. But there was one incident when oh, this service girl I approached. And she was like, ah, Francis, you work at the mug. No, 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 no. 
I can't date a mortician. No, 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 no. I was like, no, I'm not a mortician. He said, no, you are working at a mortician. You are working at a mortician. You are a mortician. So I never had the opportunity to ever date her. So now that the body has been sent away, how has this job affected or how, how, how do you even view life and death in the first place? And has it solidified your belief or your faith in God or any higher being or higher power? It has really changed my perception of viewing life like in the outside world. Yeah, and being on, I mean, being on this world has also humbled me in general due to the fact that some of the stories surrounding uh, death, it's, some is very crazy. Because day in and day out, you're moving, you're moving out, you don't know what can, might happen to you. Saki Festus is my name, I'm a mortician. My name is Raymond Alode and I am a mortician. My name is Papu Brown and I'm a mortician. As we go about our daily lives, it is easy to forget that death is an inevitable part of the human experience. But the work that Francis and his colleagues do reminds us of the importance of honoring and respecting the dead and also cherishing the time that we have with our loved ones. And so when you run into a mortician, be thankful for the path that they chose for who will take care of us when we die. Imam Samani, TV3 News, Accra.